in Spokane, Washington, as the Cougars take on the Kansas State Wildcats. We welcome you inside the Spokane Arena, everybody, alongside Karan Butler. I'm Eric Rothman, and Karan, let's start with Kansas State because this is a loaded Big 12 conference that they're in, but they have a pretty good core group of guys. Yeah, the big three, Wade, Sneed, and Stokes, those are the guys that bring it night in and night out on a consistent basis, but the big question with Kansas State is the depth of that team. And you're going to need somebody outside of the starting five that's going to bring it and give you that spark off the bench. Both of these teams have depth in the backcourt. Tonight we're watching Bobby Brown versus Malachi Flynn. Bobby Brown, you know, a guy that can really do it on the perimeter, known nationally, nationwide for his defense. So that's a heck of a matchup right there. Malachi Flynn, you know, he's a guy that's looking for airspace early and often. As we touched on the shoot around, he do not have a light. He can shoot whenever he feels like. Washington State shoots a lot of threes, and Kansas State wants to get out and run. Robert Franks, the long, lanky forward for the Cougars. As we take a look at the lineups for Kansas State, we already mentioned Bobby Brown, but keep an eye as well on Kamau Stokes. He's averaging 15 points, five assists per game for the Wildcats, and Malachi Flynn and Robert Franks, the inside-outside combo of those two, have them at seven and three on the season. Kansas State nine and two and it's washington state in the white uniforms kansas state in the black road uniforms and the purple trim offensively you see big number 43 drick bernstein for washington state he's an interesting guy to keep an eye on tonight for many reasons and the one that sticks out like a sore thumb is bernstein's a guy who's going to be playing the point for these guys that's right you heard me correctly playing the point guard position at the five spot so he's going to be getting these guys into the offense early and often, so it's going to cause a lot of matchup problems on the defensive end for K-State. They'll be going up against Dean Wade, who's the leading rebounder for Kansas State, and it's the Wildcats on offense first. What do you look for offensively for Kansas State? I'm looking for, you know, just the spacing and ball movement. You know, Snead is going to be looking for his opportunities early, and, you know, it's some things that, you know, Coach had touched on. He's willing to live with him shooting the ball on the perimeter and those options, but he don't want the other guys to beat him. It's Kamal Stokes, five on the shot clock, getting it inside, left-hand shot, no good for McCall Mewin. It's forward from West Valley City, Utah, and a turnover on the Cougars. So Washington State, they go back to defense, and Coach Ernie Kent throws a lot of different defensive schemes at, at opponents. Coaches do a great job of, you know, picking up full court. You might see a little matchup zone as well because they got good length. And, you know, they're a little smaller. You know, and you want to match the size of K-State, so you got to mix it up and keep them off balance for the majority of the game. Xavier Sneed had four three-pointers in the win against Southeast Missouri State. That was the last Kansas State game. Missing his first three-point attempt there as Quinton Hinson gets inside. And that's the second turnover on Washington State. Kansas State likes to move, likes to press the pace, and Stokes is the one to lead him there. Stokes started off a shoot around. He had a serious approach. He was the only guy on that team talking and getting those guys ready for the moment, and he came out ready. Robert Franks a long three. And this is a Cougar team that has struggled in first half of games so far this season. They struggle shooting the ball, but that do not mean they're not going to take the shots. Once they present themselves, they're definitely going to take advantage of the opportunities. Washington State averages 33-point attempts per game as Hinson gets an absolute gimme underneath the bucket after a save by Kansas State. It was good to see Henson get a rhythm right there with the easy gimme because he had an early turnover and then he had another turnover driving to the basket. Great pass inside by Dean Wade. And a foul on the Cougars. Ernie Kent in his fourth season with Washington State has finally got his guys. They get out and run. They practice with a 12-second shot clock. And we asked him earlier today, we said, you know, you're Three pointers per game over the course of the season has dropped from 35 to now 30. Is that by design? He said, no, I want to be shooting 45. I want to be like Mike D'Antoni down in Houston. Yeah, he compared himself to the Houston Rockets and the opportunities and getting up and playing with pace. And that's a Hooper's dream right there. If you're a guy sitting on that bench over there, you're like, man, coach want us to shoot more shots? <laughs> I mean, that's a blessing right there. So, And I was recruited by Coach Ernie Kent. You know, back when he got, got Alex Scales from Racine, Wisconsin. And he's just one of those guys when he was there at Oregon. He's a pleasure to play for watching him from afar. The sophomore Mayween gets both of the free throws. And Quentin Hinson was called for the personal foul. A 4-2 early lead here for Kansas State. 
There's the five man running the point, Drick Bernstein, up top to Malachi Flynn. Flynn's three point attempt trickles out of bounds as Bruce Weber, in his sixth season now at the helm for Kansas State, got them to the NCAA tournament last season and it's all about pace for Kansas State. It really is, and this is about a big picture and looking at the marathon of the season. You know, with conference play just a week out, you want to play with good pace, you want to get seasoned and get into a good flow, headed in on the 29th to start conference play. Eighth meeting all time between these two teams. They met last season with Kansas State winning 70 to 56, but a lot of seniors on both squads graduating and moving on as Dean Wade missing the 18-footer and an offensive rebound for Kansas State. Oh, wide open, the no-look pass. Kamal Stokes inside to McCall Moeen. Owen did a great job as a big. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Slip the screen and show your hands, show yourself, because he could have easily got looked over with that pass, but by him showing his hands, he was able to get the, the pass right there. Malachi Flynn cutting inside for his first bucket. Win this season averaging 15 points per game and he's also second among Pac-12 players in three-pointers made per game. And a good reverse lay-in on the other end by Barry Brown Jr. What does having the five and Drick Bernstein running the point do to Kansas State's defense? You know, you see it. Once you bring the five away from the basket where they're traditionally at, it disturbs the whole defensive scheme of whatever you have going because it's so much real estate, meaning that there's no one in the paint, no shot blocking in the paint. So you saw when Flynn had went downhill on that last possession, there was no shot blocker to come over and rotate, and that's how he got the easy bucket. The foul was on Barry Brown. That's his first. Both of these teams picking up some early fouls and early turnovers, and it's an early 8-4 to four lead for Kansas State. Here is Bernstein, who coming off a right knee injury over the summer. He's a transfer from North Dakota. One thing that Bernstein pointed out is that he's healthy as he's ever been, and he's ready. That was a really good find right there. A very good passing big man, and Washington State got bailed out there by a last-second foul call as the shot clock was expiring. The foul is on Xavier Sneed, the sophomore, and now Robert Franks to the free throw line. And Franks is a guy who has really improved year over year, getting a lot more opportunity this year for Coach Kent. He's improved his scoring per game three times the amount it was last year, going from six to now 18 points per game this year. Kent talked a lot about uh, Frank, just that he's a guy that's very skilled, and he can knock down shots. He can take advantage of opportunities. The thing that they want him to continue to work on is his secondary options, meaning that he has to learn to put the ball on the floor more than two times to create opportunities for himself and his teammates. Frank's averaging those 18 points. He's also averaging seven rebounds and three assists. Can really do it all. And he'll run the top of a 1-3-1 zone defense that the Cougars like to get into. Right now looks like a little matchup zone. A step back three-pointer for Stokes is good. Stokes is a, a clear gamer. Every time he makes a shot, he look over here at me and Aaron, making sure that we know that he was ready for the moment. We see you, young fella. Deontay Daniels can't answer on the other end. Daniels has averaged 17 points per game in his last two games. That's up from nine points per game in the season average. But it's been slow going so far for Washington State from three. They've missed their first three attempts. And Stokes gets inside. A lot of body, no whistle. Here's Flynn. The trailer is Franks. Sneed picking it up for Kansas State. Kansas State just has so many different options on the offensive end. You see Brown, you see Wade, you see Sneed, who haven't got himself involved yet. But all of those guys can do some things.
Welcome in a new audience who just saw the Wofford upset of number five, North Carolina. We are early on here in Spokane, a home away from home game for Washington State as they trail early to Kansas State, 13 to six. Eric Rothman, Karan Butler here with you. And we mentioned it earlier, Karan, but Washington State as a team shoots a lot of threes. And right now, even with that turnover, they are run at the point position by a big guy. The five spot, Drick Bernstein. And Bernstein is a guy who has become more versatile in Ernie Kent's system. And, you know, that's not traditional to have a guy at the five position running the point. What makes it so difficult, you know, for the defender is that now your shot blocker and the guy who's going to rotate and protect the paint for you is no longer there because he's on a perimeter guarding. And he's playing pick and roll situations on the perimeter and all that. So Bernstein is the guy who's clever enough and crafty enough to create opportunities. It's been amazing watching him in the first few minutes. Welcome you inside the Spokane Arena, everybody. That's Karan Butler. I'm Eric Rothman. So an early lead for Kansas State. And Kansas State, it's a loaded Big 12 conference that they're in. They've hung around so far. And maybe their most signature game of the season so far was a loss to Arizona State. It was a possession ball game. And, you know, we talked to Snead, we talked to Wade, we talked to Stokes and all those guys. They said, you know what, we learned from that experience, and that's the way you do with losses. You learn from those experiences, you move forward, and that's exactly what they're doing. For Washington State, they were picked to finish last in the Pac-12, starting a little slow here tonight as they've allowed Stokes to get open. And you know what, they, they started slow, but at the same time, that's because Snead and those guys haven't got going. But Stokes is a guy, like he said, I'm a leader, I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to lead these guys through these moments. And, you know, we learned a lot from, you know, the losses, you know, with the possession ball games and stuff like that. So I'm looking for him to will find a way to will these guys to a win tonight. Stokes averaging 15 points per game. It's a 5-0 Kansas State run. So what's at stake in this game? Well, Kansas State, fourth straight win against Washington State. That's what's on the line. And Washington State, they have not beaten Kansas State since 2005. These two teams actually met for the first time this date in 1941. So a very long rivalry that has spanned eight games between these two. There's a whole lot of first time things happening. You just saw what happened to the North Carolina Tar Heels in the <laughs> game prior to ours. So, you know, um, if I'm them, I'm coming in extremely confident and trying to make history. What do you make of that Wofford first top 25 win ever for their program? Man, congratulations to Wofford University. I did not see that happening. And we were sitting here courtside watching it on the, on the screen just saying, wow, this is, this is going to go down to the wire. And amazingly, they pulled it off. So Kansas State, the 13-6 lead. Kansas State 9-2 this season. They're coming off a win against Southeast Missouri State. Washington State is 7-3, coming off a win against IUPUI. And there's that 1-3-1 zone by Washington State. The reason why it's so hard to play against it because of the length of the Cougars. They do a great job of just showing their hands. Good hands by Dean Wade, and Coach Bruce Weber thinks that if he puts it together, he could be an NBA talent. I think so as well, just watching him to shoot around. His professionalism and how he, seriously he takes his craft. You know, it's a confidence thing with him. It's all mental. 14 minutes to play here in the opening half in Spokane, Washington. The Cougars offense just discombobulated right now. Good interior defense by Kansas State. Washington State has a loaded backcourt. As we mentioned, Bernstein comes out and plays the court, but they have some guards as well. We saw Vionte Daniels missing the three. We mentioned Malachi Flynn. They can move it around. They find the three. Malachi Flynn in the corner. And now Washington State, zero points in the last three minutes. They got real lucky right there with that miss by Flynn. He's a guy that makes open looks and tough ones. Washington State opening this game 0 for 5 from 3. Well, you see Flint, you see Wade right here. He's just waiting for the opportunity 
to wait on the backside of that defense, and it's finished with a strong two right there. And you're going to see a lot of mismatches like that. Wade has to continue to use his sides and be aggressive. And if he do that, the, op the open shots on the perimeter will happen for him as well because they're going to have to put bigs on him. And what do bigs do on defense? They close out short. Great opportunity for airspace to get his shot off. Coach Weber is saying he's one of the best passing bigs in the nation. He actually has a 3-1 to one assist to turnover ratio. They said he was so good playing in high school in Kansas, doing all the little things, and he became extremely efficient because he was one of the best players in the state that he started facilitating the passing the ball so well. Ernstein slips inside. 15 on the shot clock for Malachi Flynn. Tough start for Malachi Flynn, just one for four from the floor. Corner three is short by Brown. And this guy likes to fire Carter Skaggs. He is a three-point specialist, Karan. Skaggs have never seen a shot in the opportunity that he hadn't liked. He came in ready to shoot that ball, locked and loaded, and that's exactly what he's in there for. He averages 47% from three on the season. He made seven in a game earlier this year against Seattle. A junior college transfer from Chipola College. Comes off the bench. Looks pretty unassuming. But he'll fire as Skaggs misses his second attempt. You cannot close out short to Skaggs. He will shoot it early and often. Sneed is knocked down on that three-point attempt, but an offensive rebound for the Wildcats. Bernstein up top, running the 1-3-1. Three, one. Cartier Jara missing the three and out of bounds. Will stay with Kansas State. Tough shooting for Washington State early. They trail Kansas State 17-9. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever. And Land Rover, above and beyond. You're watching ESPN's Holiday Hoops presented by Zales in Spokane, Washington. Washington State is trailing Kansas State early, 17 to 9. And you are watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. We welcome you back inside the Spokane Arena. Eric Rothman and Karan Butler. And we already saw Carter Skaggs, Karan, hit one three-pointer for Washington State. But the Cougars are struggling three for 11 from the floor. Well, the only answer to that is to continue to shoot and, you know, take good shots and opportunities, but don't be shy just because you started off to a slow start. The Cougars have also just turned the ball over four times here in the first half. Kansas State has won the last three meetings between these two teams. This is meeting number eight. Stokes has been the go-to guy early. Finds the backdoor oh. cut for the one-hand slam. McCall Maween. Really good two-man basketball right there by Stokes. Just, you know, getting the guy to bite on it enough to just throw that slot bounce pass to Maween for the strong finish with the left hand. Instant rejected by Maween. Two on one. And Bobby Brown Jr. laying it in. And a timeout taken by Washington State. It's a 10-point lead for Kansas State. We'll be back in 30 seconds here in Spokane. It's out to a 12-point lead for Kansas State, and a big reason why, Karan, is Trick Bernstein on the bench opening up stuff for Kansas State. We said that initially that Bernstein keeps the five-man on the perimeter. Without him on the perimeter, now the five-man in the paint, and that created a great opportunity for Brown and K-State to get the, get the block and get in transition and make something good happen. Coach Kent not messing around. Bern, Bernstein is ready to check back in. Washington State... Four turnovers, shooting just three of 12 from the floor. It's a 13-3 run for Kansas State. Milan Aqua threw that one, rejected out of bounds. 
Bowl season rolls on Thursday night with the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The Temple Owls battle the 8-4 FIU Panthers at the Trop in Tampa. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. And a whistle before the inbound will be against Kansas State. And so Bernstein comes in. And we've talked about it, but it's just a space opener when you put him up top. And it's really amazing that as the biggest guy on the floor, he's also the quickest guy on the floor for Washington State. It really is. And one thing that Bernstein touched on is that he's healthy now. And it's paying dividends for them. And that's why they want to utilize him as much as possible with the ball in his hand. Skaggs off the inbound, his second three-pointer of the game. And now malfunction with the shot clock. How about Carter Skaggs? He's a guy who, if you saw him playing pickup basketball, probably wouldn't think much of him. And then you <laughs> give him the basketball in the corner or behind the three-point line for about a tenth of a second, and he makes you pay. From the looks of him, you know, when he comes to the playground, you ask him to ref the game. <laughs> but he's a guy that can get in the game with his play and knock it down. You know, if he get any daylight, he's going to knock it down for you. Washington State in the 1-3-1 defense. Really trying to cut off the square footage that Kansas State is able to operate in. Offensive rebound and a putback for Ahmad Wainwright. We touched on that in free game that we needed more guys to come in off that K-State bench and do the little things, and that's exactly what you see from Wainwright. Under 10 minutes to play now in the opening half as Stokes missing the three. Skaggs calling for it in transition. Went down, no whistle, but an offensive rebound for the Cougars. Milan Aqua, a guy who comes off the bench for Coach Ernie Kent. Sometimes operates like a bull in a china shop, but he likes to get inside and kick it out to Skaggs or Bernstein. Nowhere to go right now from Kansas State's defense. Gags, tough drive and a finish with the left. He's having himself one heck of a first half right now. They crowded him, playing him for the shot because you do not want him to have airspace. What did he do? Like any good skilled basketball player, put the ball on the floor, go right to the basket with no shot blocker because Bernstein is back in the game with the five man outside on the perimeter, which opened it up for an easy two. Skaggs already above his season average. He's got eight points so far. As you see, he's just probing with the ball right now. Usually a shot blocker would be in there, but where's the shot blocker? On the perimeter, Garden Bernstein. That enabled him to go Skaggs right down the left drive off the glass for the easy two. Carter Skaggs from Logansport, Indiana. Six foot five guard who transferred from Chipola Community College. And the Juco transfer has really lit it up this season from three, 47% beyond the arc so far this year and a foul up top on Orinze Cheetah. So Karan, right now for Kansas State, we have seen a lot of Kamau Stokes. They've gotten some help from Moeen on the inside, but Dean Wade has been kind of quiet. How do they get him involved? Wade's been extremely quiet as well as Snead. And what you have to do is you have to put him in action. He's a shooter. He has to touch the ball. You cannot limit his touches. Here is Snead in the corner. Came up short. Transition layup missed by Cheatham. Golden opportunity there for the Cougars that really would have gotten these fans on their feet. Wade, ball fake, but he faked himself out. A travel on the Wildcats. For Washington State on the offensive end, Kansas State's doing a really good job defensively. How have they stopped the Cougars so far? Just getting to the paint. They're doing a great job of getting to the paint and showing their length as much as possible. A lot of the stops, the most, majority of the stops came when Bernstein went to the bench for those couple of minutes. And that's when, you know, they got the deflections, they got on the transition, they got the open opportunities that they was desperately looking for. Flynn slips on the baseline. It's going to stay with the Cougars. But not before we send it to a break. It's a 23-14 lead for Kansas State here in Spokane. 
You wonder why K-State is playing so great. You look at Kamal Stokes coming down the length of the court for the elbow jumper. And then once again, coming off the pick and roll with the step back, creating airspace. And then he gets down to the, the logo, come off the pick and roll to McGween for the strong finish with the left hand and back paddling on defense, talking to his teammates, telling guys to get back in position. No celebrating because we got a game to win. Stokes averaging 15 points per game. His Kansas State Wildcats are up 23-14 as Malachi Flynn's struggles continue as Flynn just one for five so far tonight. Here is Stokes on the baseline. Finds the open man. It's Wainwright for three. Bernstein inside. Tough shot with the left. Cougars not a lot of rhythm on the offensive end. No rhythm whatsoever because the pace of the game is favoring K-State. Touch pass to Sneed up top. Offensive rebound inside. Boween has been great so far. Loose ball out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Wildcats. I was waiting to see when I was going to see a little more desperation by the Cougars. Not playing like they're, they're up 10 or 15, but they're actually down. And the sense of urgency has to change from the Cougars. Not just from the offensive end, but the defensive end as well. Washington State has become accustomed to trailing early in games as Moeen gets inside. Washington State has trailed at the half six of their ten games so far. They're four and two in those games, and they've overcome 20-point deficits two times so far this season. New Year's Day, we'll have the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number three, Georgia, and number two, Oklahoma, kick things off in the Rose Bowl game at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific. And then it's number four, Alabama, and number one, Clemson, in the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games on the app. Great touch pass. Wade is such a good passer in the post. He's a great facilitator. He's so unselfish, and you have to remind him to be selfish at times, but that was just a great basketball read. The defender coming over and dumping it off to Wayne for him to do some real finish with the easy two. It's a loose ball foul. This is the second assist of the night for Wade. You see Wade just coming over, showing himself, dumping it off to McQueen, and is dropping it in for the easy two. That's his good basketball right there. Unselfish play. Wade still doing the big things, having a big impact on the game, even though he's not shooting the ball as well as you like or more. He's still doing all the big things. And Skaggs is the only one doing anything for Washington State's offense. He has 10 of their 16. I don't think... I don't think they're taking him serious as an offensive threat. You know, now you're closing off to him, and he's showing his skill set that he can put the ball on the floor and still be efficient. Sneed has been cold. Zero for five from the floor. Flynn pops a three. Are you seeing anything from Flynn that's leading to these off-balance shots? He's just not in the rhythm. He's not in the flow right now. Ahmad Wainwright underneath. And another timeout taken by a very frustrated coach Ernie Kent. It's the largest lead of the night for Kansas State at 14. And I mentioned the first half issues for Washington State. They've gotten down a lot. They've had to overcome 20-point deficits, 22-point deficits. The harder the competition gets as they get into conference play, and especially tonight against Kansas State, a good Big 12 team, you can't afford to get down early. Yeah, they'll play from behind team, but you don't want to get too far behind against a team like K-State. They're they rolling right now. Bruce Weber had talked about that, you know, these guys are thinking the marathon of the season, the big picture, a week out from conference play, some things that they want to accomplish and get done, and they came in with a focused attitude. And, you know, earlier, you know, in shoot-around, we was talking, you know, to Sneed and, you know, all the guys, and they're super engaged, ready for this moment and this opportunity. We saw, saw the Washington State first half, first, second half numbers, and 33 points 
per game on average in the first half for Washington State. But if you look on the other side of Kansas State, they're a team that comes out hot. They outscore on average their opponents 41 to 28 in the first half. You remember what Stokes said after the shoot around? He said that he didn't particularly play well last year. And that was in the back of his mind, and he wanted to come out. The matchup between him and Flynn, he took very personal. Right now, you see him guarding him, picking him up the length of the court. This is something that, you know, you want to see as a competitor, and I like seeing these things. He takes a seat on the bench. Rick Bernstein missing the mid-range for Washington State. Carter Skaggs is the only player to score in the last seven minutes. Safe to say he won't be coming out soon, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Might get hot with those sleeves on, though. As Wade is fouled, and he'll go back to the free throw line. You know what opened up that, that possession right there? Because he's been so self unselfish during the first half of this game, now he's able to operate because they're fearing his pass and him facilitating and finding the open guy. So now he has the defender one-on-one, -on -one, which he wanted, and he goes right to his sweet spot and get fouled, and now he's at the strike for two. Drake Bernstein called for his first foul. When it comes to Dean Wade, you were talking to Coach Kent earlier in practice, and or excuse me, Coach Weber, and really he was just saying that the pieces are all there. He's just got to have the confidence to put it together. Yeah, he said that all the components of being a legit player and a professional player to make a living playing basketball, he possesses. And I watched him. You know, I kept an eye on him during the whole shoot around. Professional approach, good size, good length. You know, knows how to take a shoot around extremely serious and do the big things. And I love seeing him operate, and I want his mentality to stay consistent, and he can be special. Moves across the free throw line. He finds Sneed in the corner as the shot clock was winding down. And Sneed still without a point here in this first half. Washington State gives it right back. This could be Sneed's first bucket. He loses it out of bounds. Referee John Higgins didn't see it. Got some help by referee Chris Rassner. And it's a turnover on Kansas State. That was the right call right there. Sneed couldn't keep a handle on the ball. Juggled it a little bit. Lost it. Easy out on K-State going the other way. Sneed 0 for 6. He averages 13 points per game. As Kansas State picks up their third turnover. He's head on the shot clock for Milan Aqua. And he will shoot two. Milan Aqua to the free throw line. Washington State needs to find some offense. From ABC and ESPN, share the incredible gift of sport on Christmas Day. Uh, nothing says Christmas Day like the NBA Quran. So we're back here in Spokane. It's a 31-16 lead for Kansas State. And the Cougars of Washington State, boy, it's pretty much been Carter Skaggs and then everybody else. Skaggs just came out with the mindset saying, just give me the ball. I'm just, he's talking to himself right now. I like it. <laughs> he's staying in the rhythm and staying in the moment. Get him the ball. Well, Skaggs has not been the issue. The issue has been Washington State shooting two for 13 from three-point range. And Kansas State just playing good, solid defense and really disrupting the flow of the Cougars. Yeah, you know, the guy, you know, Kansas State is not rushing anything. They're getting their opportunities, their shots, you know, they're sharing the ball extremely well. And they're playing with a lot of poise. Nothing is rushed for them right now. And if you're the Cougars, that's not a good thing because you want to speed them up. You're showing them different looks defensively. You're showing them the 1-3-1 one, one zone. You're showing them the pick up 5-on-5, five five, length of the floor. And you're not speeding them up. That's a problem. Awkward shot for Stokes. Three and a half minutes to go here in Spokane in the first half. As Milan Aqua missing the layup. Washington State cannot afford to give away baskets like that. Yeah, Aqua definitely uh, lost the handle of the ball right there, but I think he was looking for the contact, and once he saw no one was there, it was just a little too late. He lost the ball. Wildcats shooting 41% from the floor here in the first half, and they add another three-pointer by Brian Patrick, the reserve sophomore off the bench. Another great find by Wade. Just getting into the paint, knowing that the defense is going to come because he draws so much attention. 
and finding the open guy. Swat out of bounds by Moeen as the interior play of Wade and Moeen wreaking havoc. Usually when Bernstein is not handling the ball on the, on the perimeter, it usually results to a foul or a block in the paint when the Cougars are trying to get into the paint to score easy buckets. Fading away, Robert Franks rattles one in. Just the first field goal of the game for Franks. He's up to four points thanks to a couple free throws. Washington State going to be in for a long night if Franks and Flynn can't produce. And I'll tell you one thing, Flynn is going to find his rhythm. He's going to continue to stay aggressive. And Franks have to stay aggressive right now with the guys that he's out there right now with. Brown is blocked from behind. Stay with Kansas State. To change, to turn this energy and the momentum of this game around, if you're the Cougars, you got to get a couple of charges, deflections. Uh, you got to go on a 7-2, 8-2 run, things like that to change the momentum and the flow of this game. Mid-range jumper from Brown. You haven't seen a lot of pace from Washington State pushing it up the floor. None whatsoever, and that's something that Coach Ernie can't talk about. You know, we want to play with pace. Just keeps feeding it to Carter Skaggs. That's really the only game plan that's worked so far. I'm telling you, get him the ball. Find a way to get him open. If he's hot like that, you got to throw multiple screens and things at, it, at his direction to get him some airspace so he can continue to shoot because he's definitely hot. Third triple for Skaggs. He's up to 13 points here in the first half. Puts the lead down to 12 and a foul on Washington State. Whole season rolls on on Thursday night with the bad boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. It's the Temple Owls and the 8-4 FIU Panthers in Tampa. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. It's Carter Skaggs has 13 of Washington State's 22 points. They're finding him in corners. But you talked about the pace that Washington State wants to play at. They have zero fast break points so far tonight. And that's a problem, but that means one thing. That means Stokes, which he touched on, I did a great job in the scout report knowing that they're going to throw different looks at me. I'm going to be safe with the ball. I'm going to control myself and be a leader. And as I go, the Washington State cannot stop us in transition and things like that. But K-State, as he go, they go. Do you think Stokes and Brown may be the best defensive backcourt in the Big 12? They definitely got to be one. They up there. And I love, you know, Stokes, he, he touched on that he was going to take the assignment of Garden Flynn. Flynn has scored right there, a much-needed basket. But I love the fact that Stokes is out there trying to defend him early and often and challenge him. We'll see if that gets Malachi Flynn going. Just one for six from three, but it's down to a 10-point manageable lead. And deficit for Washington State. And now an offensive foul on the Wildcats. Coming up on the Zales Halftime Report with Carl Ravage, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. The Shocker, Wofford over North Carolina at UNC. And then Duke with a huge win today against Evansville. The foul was on Moeen. Now a chance for Washington State before the break to get it down to single digits. A two on one opportunity. Here's Franks inside. Kansas State basketball. That was a really, really tough play right there by Franks. And he caught it right here on this sideline. The Skaggs wide open in front of K-State bench. I thought that could have easily been a cross-court pass with the first clean look that Skaggs got, Skaggs got all night. But that was a missed opportunity for him right there. If you're Washington State for as poorly as you've played on offense, if you can get into the locker room under a 10-point deficit, that's got to be considered a win. That's a win situation right there. Kansas State being led by Moeen on the inside with 10 points, but it's a 7-1 run for Washington State. And another turnover. Eric, we talked about it. This game is all about runs and stops. And if they could change the momentum, which the Cougars have in the last two minutes, if they can do that and go into the locker room, cutting this thing a little under 10, they're in a good position. Flynn off balance, fighting for his own rebound, going out of bounds into the first row. And hopefully everybody's okay. Looks like they hit some empty seats and a loose ball turnover. We'll head to Kansas State. Kansas State now zero for their last 225. 
Excuse me, two minutes and 25 seconds as Washington State trying to save it from going out of bounds. Ten point lead for Kansas State on the offensive end. They've been really good at working the ball around and generating assists. Well, Christmas came a little early, you know, for the Kansas State team. You know, they're passing the ball. They're looking very unselfish. See Wayne right, right there. Just sharing is caring. They're invested and see the big picture. If we do the little things and pass the ball and everybody is rewarded, everybody's going to hustle and, 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 and try to give more effort on the offensive side and the defensive side. It's super engaging and fun to watch. Kansas State has 10 assists on 13 made field goals. Washington State just three assists on nine made field goals. And under 45 seconds to play here in the first half. It's a 10-point advantage for Kansas State. Wildcats led by as many as 17. Corner three for Patrick rattles out. A good looking shot by Patrick right there. This in and out. Now a chance for the Cougars to get some momentum going into the locker room and make it a single digit deficit. Coach can't tell them from the sideline when to go. So right about under 10. One second difference between the game and the shot clock. Final six seconds of the first half. Four seconds to shoot. Flynn flailing inside, goes out of bounds. But will stay with Washington State one second on the shot clock. I mean, you got the matchup that you wanted. You know, you had Wade on Flynn. Flynn, a, a much quicker guard to get into the paint and make something happen. Wade did a great job of moving his feet and getting the deflection. So a chance at a quick pop for the Cougars. Two seconds to play here in the half. One second on the shot clock. Flynn intercepted. Shot clock violation with one second to go. Should be, I would assume, one and a half seconds, 1.3 seconds. They're not going to reset it. They're going to keep it at one. And Kansas State, who hasn't had a field goal in the last three minutes of action, has a 10-point lead as they limp into the locker room. Washington State starting to get a little momentum, but it's been the interior play of McCall Mawain as Kansas State up by 10. Our halftime score, Kansas State 35-25. Gazelle's halftime report will begin right after these messages. ESPN's Holiday Hoops presented by Zales. It's a 10-point halftime lead for Kansas State on the road against Washington State. But the Cougars did finish out the first half on a 7-1 run. As we welcome you back to Spokane, Washington, everybody, alongside Karan Butler, I'm Eric Rothman. And for Kansas State, they really dominated that first half. A big reason why one of the guys that gets overshadowed a little bit, McCall Moeen. Yeah, remember we was talking about earlier in the first half in pregame, who was going to step up? We had Snead, we had Wade, we had Stokes. And then Mawin just came out being efficient like he always is. Just an active body around the paint. And Weber told us that, look, we had to find a way to get this guy going. And that's exactly what they did. Teammates looking for him. Christmas came early. Very unselfish play. And then, hey, look. Nothing easy in my house. But we ain't blocked that shot right there going downhill. Thought he had an easy two. But we ain't cleaned it up. But we ain't finished with 10 points, four rebounds, two blocks. As you see, Kansas State, 10 assists on 13 field goals. And for Washington State, they were led by Carter Skaggs, the Juco transfer, with 13 points on five of seven shooting. But they need some of their other guys, Malachi Flynn and Robert Franks, to get in on the offensive action. Here is Deontay Daniels to start out the second half. All right. That's the fourth, excuse me, the fifth Washington State three-point field goal in 17 attempts. You see they're going with a lot of shooting on the perimeter, the Cougars we're talking about. And you see Skaggs, you know, starting off this second half as a starter with the initial group. Stokes with a burst of speed. Kamau Stokes now with eight. And Ruth Bernstein down low. Skaggs, he needs about an inch of space to let it go. An offensive rebound and a reset for the Cougars. Oh, wow. And 
Malachi Flynn just two for nine in that first half. Great feed on the inside to Drick Bernstein. And a 5 nothing run to start the second half for Washington State. That's another reason why you want Bernstein in, because a big is used to rotating back, getting to another big. But in this case, Bernstein dives right into the paint, making itself available for Flynn for the easy two. Actually a 5-2 to two run. As Malachi Flynn was fighting for the steal. Kansas State led by as many as 17 in the first half. Washington State, a team that loves to come back in the second half. They've done it six times already this season. Skaggs left alone. The southpaw, his fourth three. Foul on the floor will be against Carter Skaggs on the other end. As you can see, you know, Bernstein is right here making the action happen. And then what he's going to do is slip the screen, Flynn probing, making sure the two come to guard him. And then he just did a great job of making himself available, showing his hands and finishing for the easy two with the left hand. Carter Skaggs up to 16 points. Bobby Brown Jr. rattles one home. Lynn lost it off of his foot. Washington State has overcome deficits of 22 and 20 so far this season. Looking to overcome a 17-point deficit here tonight. Skaggs again. You bet! Gags is up to 19 now. The second leading scorer for Washington State is Malachi Flynn with five as Stokes gets inside of a foul on the floor. But Karan, we've talked about it. Coach Ernie Kent, this is the biggest deficit since 1992, and two of them have come so far this season. They're looking for another one here tonight. I'm not surprised at all. And, and the way that Skaggs is playing and shooting right now, he just changed the scouting report. KYP, that means know your personnel. He is not just a catch-and-shoot shooter. He is a scorer. He can put it on the floor. He can do it all. Wade backing down Bernstein. Kansas State will reset five on the shot clock for Stokes. And that's not a good foul by Drick Bernstein. You see Skaggs right here just moving without the ball. That's this good offense. And then turned around and saying, yeah, I feel it. <laughs> Keep coming to me. Feed me. Feed me. Foul trouble to watch for Washington State. That's the third foul on Bernstein. Loose ball out of bounds. The original signal is Kansas State basketball. Washington State fans are not happy. So Bernstein's going to come out with those three fouls. And when he hit the bench in the first half, there was a whole lot of trouble for Washington State. It changed the whole offensive prowess of the Cougars because you know, once they got to going downhill and getting into the gaps and in the seams of the defense of Kansas State, you know, Maween and those guys, they're coming over, deflecting, Wade, doing the, doing the things, coming with the rotation, getting the deflections, and getting out of transition and getting easy opportunities. We'll see if Kansas State can go on a run with Bernstein on the bench. Jeff Pollard comes in with Bernstein hitting the pine. Brown lobbing, Maween catching and a finish, and one. Maween is doing a great job of going exactly where a big man's supposed to do. Rolling right in front of the rim, catching the ball, keeping it high, not dropping it under his chest, keeping it high so the littles cannot come over and rotate and deflect it and finish it for the easy two. Maween doubling up his season average. Now with his 13th point, he shoots 78% from, from the field. The Juco transfer actually started his career at Utah. Never actually played for the Utes. As Carter stags, just give him an inch and he'll take a mile. 
Are you kidding me? You actually have to play shadow defense against him. No airspace, none whatsoever. He has 21 of Washington State's 38. Ahmad Wainwright missing on the response. Skaggs crossing over Wainwright. A rare miss by Carter Skaggs, who's now 8 of 12 from the floor. You can see his confidence is growing every time he touches the ball. Touch pass, Daniels stolen. Washington State getting a little too cute with it, but they are down four. They trailed by as many as 17 in the first half. And all you had to do was just find Skaggs off the easy curl right there, knocking it down for the two. Give him the ball. You look at Carter Skaggs, he's just moving and stand moving and making shots. He's taking shots and he's making shots. In the flow, in the rhythm, coming off pin downs, relocating, and just knocking it down. And he single-handedly has changed the momentum in the flow of this game. Also has changed some looks that Kansas State has been throwing at him on defense. Yeah. yeah. You talk about Snead. You know, he's a guy offensively Kansas State needs to get going in order for them to win this game. But Skaggs, the way that he's playing offensively, offense can be your best defense in times, and that's exactly what happened. And you see Snead not guarding him at this time. Skaggs has five three-pointers. The school record is nine. We'll keep an eye on it. Skaggs had seven in a game earlier this season. Flynn, he had his heel on the sideline, and somehow it goes in. A tiptoeing Malachi Flynn for three. I'm telling you, shot making is contagious. I think it started with Skaggs starting off the second half in the starting lineup, making shots, using his enthusiasm to get the crowd and the guys going, and there Flynn go making a big shot, and now his mojo is back. Flynn, three for ten from the floor. But now a chance for Washington State to take their first lead of the game. Daniels in the corner. See how Kansas State responds to this early second half run for the Cougars. Harry Brown Jr. silences the crowd here in Spokane for the moment. That was just a great read right there by Brown. Coming off the pick and roll, the guy goes under, and you make him pay. Airspace, I can knock down that shot. Here's Flynn again off the curl. Washington State 8 for 23 from 3. It's Brown again, this time at the elbow. Washington State outscoring Kansas State 16 to 10 so far here in the second half. A big improvement from the 29% they shot from the floor in the first as Robert Franks wants a roll and get it. Pollard the offensive rebound. No. And Kansas State out with it. They're trying to slow Skaggs down as much as possible, put one of the best national defenders on him in Brown, and he's doing a great job of just shadowing him, trying to make it difficult for him to get open and get airspace. It really seems like the upperclassmen guards of Kansas State trying to calm their team down, and Stokes and Barry Brown. They've been in the moment before, but if you see Stokes right now, he has a little limp to himself. I don't know what happened. Uh, we can get some replay back on that. That left knee, Stokes is hobbling. Sure, if he hyperextended it or what, but you see Stokes awkward having to lean on his teammate Ahmad Wainwright, and that is not good for Kansas State. As Cartier Jara coming into the game as Stokes limping to the bench. Seems like he can't put no pressure on it, none whatsoever. He's number three on the screen. Got the rebound, and it looked like it happened before that because he already already went up for that rebound with one foot. He's going to go to the locker room. So Stokes out of this game. Eight points, six assists. 
and the leader of this Kansas State team. Brown takes over. Kick out. Wainwright for three. Wainwright got his own rebound and a foul on Deontay Daniels. Brown had a little fillet action on that handling right there. You see Stokes getting worked on in the hallway there, out on the trainer's table. What does Kansas State do now with Stokes out of the lineup? Someone is going to have to step up, and you see Brown, you know, doing the majority of the handling. But now Snead is back in the game as well, so we need some scoring out of him. He's one of the big three that's reliable, consistent, half been consistent. And you see Brown right there with the putback. He's ready for the moment. Brown got his own rebound. He is up to 11 points. Snead is still scoreless. Bernstein, good baseline drive. That was, that was a really good post up by Bernstein to get right, get great position, go baseline, and finish with the offhand using his right hand on the finish. Brown got a screen. Loose ball, bodies hitting the deck, and a foul on the floor. It's going to be against Barry Brown. Washington State has made it a game, but Kamal Stokes injured for Kansas State, his team up by four. We're keeping an eye on the injury for Kansas State as they're up by four here in Spokane against Washington State. Kamal Stokes still limping with that knee injury. Still unclear as to where it occurred in the course of the game. It just looked like it got tweaked and then had to be helped off the court. We will see if he comes back in, but with those eight points, three rebounds, six assists on the bench, what does Kansas State, Karan, need to do to adjust not only offensively, but defensively as well? I think collectively, you know, guys just got to rally together. You know, you see your leader go down, and he's definitely trying to get back out there on the court. You saw him leave with help, come back, walking on his own wheel with weight on the leg. He's stretching out over there. He's getting Gatorade in him. Hopefully it was just a cramp and hopefully he's able to get back out here on the court. Washington State shooting over 50% from the floor here in the second half. They have closed a 17-point gap down to four. Daniels in the corner. Eight on the shot clock for Bernstein. Oh, what a save by Daniels. Wainwright knocks it out of bounds. It's going to stay with Washington State. Great hustle play by the Cougars. That's a big thing right there, keeping the loose balls alive and trying to just keep, keep the activity going and try to feed off that momentum. I love what I'm seeing out the Cougars right now. Eric Rothman, Karan Butler here in Spokane uh, Arena. About 75 miles north of Washington State's home in Pullman. But their fans have traveled well. Pollard off the side of the backboard. That's not his shot. Diara, excuse me, Jara is out there for Kansas State with Stokes on the bench. Brown pops a three. Bernstein is back to running the point, and he gets fouled on his way up. Well, Friday, we'll have another star-studded NBA doubleheader. They tip off your weekend at 8 p.m. Eastern. DeAndre Jordan and the Clippers are in H-Town to take on James Harden and the streaking Rockets, who have won 13 straight. And we'll take you to Oracle for Lonzo and the Lakers against Clay Thompson and the Warriors. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7.30 on ESPN and the ESPN app. Kamal Stokes is back in there with that injury. We'll keep an eye on his left knee. Still appears to be favoring it. It's Flynn drive. Skaggs in the corner. It's another one for Carter Skaggs. His sixth triple. And you 
you see defensively who's back on him. Sneed, coach staff for K-State, took him out because of his defensive prowess, not shallowing him, doing a good job on him. Brown did an excellent job of slowing him down. In the second, you take him off. There he go. Skaggs back making shots. Washington State has not led at all in this ball game. A chance to do it here. Ten-minute mark of the second half. Flynn inside. And one. Washington State leads. Putting Washington State on top by one. He'll be at the line when we return. Washington State taking a lead for the first time in this ball game. A 7-0 run, and they are up by one midway through the second half. And they have taken it to the Kansas State Wildcats here in the second. 53% shooting compared to 29 in the first half, and they have outscored Kansas State 23 to 12. Eric Rothman, Karan Butler back here in Spokane as Malachi Flynn is now up to 11 points. But Stokes is back in there for Kansas State. He can spark a run for the Wildcats. He definitely can, and the difference for the Cougars, you know, from the first half to the second half, just making shots. And that is the first field goal of the game for Xavier Sneed. So athletic and so quiet in the first half and the majority of the game. Like you said, this was the first field goal. Let's see if that can get him going. Ties things up at 49. Pollard, good spin to beat the lead. Stokes, the step back, the knee looked okay on the cut, but came up well short on the shot. You see Stokes right out the timeout, OTB, out of bounds play, throws it right up to Snead, and then Pollard just did a great job of going right where he can operate to the, to the paint, turning baseline for the easy two. No turnovers here in the second half for Washington State. Flynn straight away, tough shot, hand in his face, and Malachi Flynn is starting to feel it. A hand check foul on Bernstein, and that is his fourth foul. So Bernstein is going to go back to the bench as Robert Franks returns. You got to watch this because that can be a game changer, you know, for the Cougars because he's the guy that's been playing point guard, bringing the ball up, getting them in their sets and their offense, keeping the big of McQueen and those guys away from the paint on the perimeter so there is no shot blocking for K-State. With four fouls, you know, I'm hoping and I'm saying that you should try to get him back in there. If they go on a run, you just have to tell him to play is safe. Get him back in close to the five or the four minute mark. We'll keep an eye on it. Bernstein on the bench, four points, four fouls, five rebounds. But a leader and a spacer on the offensive end for the Cougars. Franks has been quiet tonight, just four points. Nowhere to go. Good defense by Dean Wade. Need in the corner, no. Offensive rebound, Moeen, and a foul on the floor on Jeff Pollard. Good job by Kansas State to crash the boards, but the Washington State Cougars fans getting into it. Their team on top. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever. So I can find 
Washington State coming from behind. They trail by as many as 17. They're on top 54-49 here in Spokane. And folks, bowl season rolls on on Thursday night with the Bad Boy Mowers, Gasparilla Bowl, the Temple Owls, and the FIU Panthers at the Trop in Tampa. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Eric Rothman, Karan Butler back here in Spokane. Carter Skaggs two points away from a career high. He's got 24. But for Kansas State, Karan, it's a 13-2 run for the Cougars. What has happened to the Wildcat offense? Sometimes your best offense is your defense, and Carter Skaggs is what happened to the Kansas State offense in their defense. You know, he's a guy that... You know, just his offensive prowess, getting him open, getting him the spots, getting him in situations. Got Bruce Weber over there trying to figure out how to slow him down and how to stop him, throwing different lineups and different guys at him. And he's changed the whole flow and momentum of this ball game. Drick Bernstein has four fouls for the Cougars. How do they adjust with him on the bench? It's going to be a tough adjustment because now you see Wings is coming over, tagging in the paint. He's just, he's active in the paint, and, and it's tough when you're going downhill to see that big body coming over. And Bernstein, he's a guy I think that you have to get him back out there somewhere between the five and the four minute mark if you want to keep the momentum in your favor. Bernstein's got those four fouls. Sneed now picks up his second. It's been a really tough night for Xavier Sneed. It really has. You've seen him get the easy two with the back screen, an out of bounds play. And you haven't seen much since then, so hopefully he can get some couple opportunities going down the stretch. And now another foul up top. This one on Stokes. That's his first. But really between the first half and the second half, Washington State has come out here in the second and dictated the pace of this game. It really have. And Coach Ernie Ken has said that, you know, we want to control the pace. You know, we're not going to make shots relatively all the time, but we want to play at the pace of the Houston Rockets, the Antony system style, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Flynn, another three. He's got 12 points here in the second half. Brown goes in with the left, and Brown has been the response every time for Kansas State. He really has. When Stokes went down with the injury, he just picked up exactly where Stokes left off, leading the ball club into the paint, making things happen. But we in the block on Flynn. Kansas State down by six. It's Brown again, muscling it over the rim, and in. Brown is a gamer. He didn't have to. Need, he didn't need a timeout to be told. Hey, we need you to step up in a major way. Immediately after Stokes went down, he just started gunning and making things happen for a teammate, facilitating and scoring for himself. 15 points now for Barry Brown. Flynn left alone. Seven on the shot clock for the Cougars. Franks pulls up a three. He is just one for eight from the floor, and Carter Skaggs is going to pick up a foul. That's a lot of contact right there. Both guys hustling, laying it all out there on the line for their respective ball clubs. The ninth team foul on Washington State, so a one and one opportunity here for Barry Brown. And Drick Bernstein comes back in a little bit earlier than you thought he would. Yeah, I knew he would definitely come back sooner than later because the, the, the rhythm and the flow of the game has been disrupted. And you got to get him back out there because they was playing at their best with him out there. Does he have to change his game at all with those four fouls? I mean, he just had to play with his hands up because, you know, motion is everything, you know, in this league. So you got to let the guys be mobile and move around. And he definitely can do that because you probably see him matched up with Ware or Maween. Brown in the second half, 12 points on five of nine shooting. He's the leading scorer for Kansas State. As Bernstein, who sat for two and a half minutes, comes back in. We'll see how it changes the Cougars on offense and defense. Flynn was trapped on the far sideline in a foul on Kansas State. Dean Wade picking up his second personal and Flynn to the free throw line. And 
for Malachi Flint, Karan, it seemed like his confidence in the first half was a bit shaken. He didn't find his shot until late in that first half, but ever since he came out of the locker room, he has really controlled everything Washington State has done on offense. Yeah, two for nine in the first half, and you knew he was going to get his opportunity, so he wasn't going to keep shooting, and that's what happened. He's a volume shooter, and the opportunities keep coming. He's not going to shy away from those opportunities. Ernstein tracks down the loose ball. Pop from behind, and out of bounds will stay with Washington State. Got to give a lot of credit where credit's due. Sneed right there, not having the offensive game, but tracking it down and still getting a deflection from behind, which could have been an easy two for Bernstein right there in transition. Washington State had to bring back Bernstein because Kansas State is on a 6-0 run right now, and they are down by two. Five and a half minutes to play here in Spokane. A home away from home game for the Cougars as they have Drawing a nice crowd here at the Spokane Arena. Checking the time on the shot clock. 26 seconds to work with for the Cougars. And they throw it away on the inbound. Eighth turnover of the game on Washington State. Oh, this is a bad possession right there. Out of bounds. Just throw the ball loosely in. That was a possession right there that you probably kicked yourself in the butt for later on in this game. Chance for Kansas State to tie or take the lead. Stokes is foul. Seems to be okay with that left knee injury that he went down with earlier. Comes back in, not limping anymore. He's got eight points and seven assists. And even if he's got a knee injury and he's playing hurt, his presence is enough for Coach Weber in Kansas State. Yeah, because he puts the fear on the defense to keep them back -powering. Because the scout report is, don't let him get going. He is the leader, the bona fide leader of this ball club. So the Cougars are doing a great job of getting all the defensive attention catered to him. Bags off a curl, sitting at 24 points on the night. Brown did a great job on Skaggs right there on the pin down, just sitting right in his jersey. Flynn, crossover, four to shoot. Good job by Bernstein to keep it alive for the Cougar. Cougars. Franks tracks it down, and Robert Franks, his second field goal of the night. It was good to see Frank scoring in on that possession right there by putting the ball in the floor. A wee, not the shot you want him to take. With your team down by three, he has been great tonight in the low post. His first shot from more than five feet away from the basket all night. He's shooting over 70% 70, 70 from the field, so to take that shot right there, you know, that was an out of character moment right there. A foul as Bernstein drives. Xavier Sneed picking up his third personal. So both of these teams now will shoot free throws with the bonus. So you get a look at the hoop scoop on Drick Bernstein. His father, Rod, was the 24th overall pick in the 1987 NFL Draft for the San Diego Chargers. That's why he's a big, a five at that position, being so mobile. He got footwork. He's coordinated. Coach Kent says he's the fastest guy on our team. <laughs> One of those agility drills. A wing baseline. Offensive foul. Carter Skaggs getting his nose dirty again. Carter Skaggs in Washington State hanging on to a three-point lead. What a night of college basketball it has been here on ESPN. Wofford taking down North Carolina right before this game. And now a great one here in Spokane between Washington State and Kansas State. Holiday hoops on ESPN lining it up midweek. Karan, if this is how we're doing on a Wednesday night, think about what it's going to be like over the weekend. I cannot wait 
I'm looking forward to all this great basketball, but this is such an exciting game. You look at Carter Skaggs, that last possession, coming over, sacrificing his body for the better good of the team, changing the momentum back into Washington State favor. I love what I'm seeing. Keep an eye on that foul trouble for Kansas State that you just saw on your screen. Three fouls for Moeen and Sneed, four for Wainwright. Here's Bernstein, he's got four fouls of his own. Saved by Daniels, 10 on the shot clock. Skaggs, they left him alone. Awkward shot, Malachi Flynn is there to put it back. Wade, good drive and a take on Franks. Just the fourth field goal attempt of the night for Dean Wade, who now has seven points. Flynn is up to 19. Under three minutes to play, and Washington State up by three. Flynn driving up with the right, and Malachi Flynn back to the free throw line. He was sizing them up, he being Flynn the whole time, getting the switch right there on Wade. Made him in for the jumper that he usually would take. And driving it right downhill, drawing the contact. Now going to the strike for two. And we started to see in the second half that Kansas State had to adjust because as soon as Flynn started making a couple threes, Kansas State had to come out, guard him a little bit higher, and he's been burning him off the dribble. It really has. You know, it's a scout report. You know, he's a guy that can make shots. We saw and shoot around early. I saw him make nine to 10 in a row from deep from the parking lot almost. So in the game, he got a good rhythm and a good flow and the crowd is feeling it. And as a leader he is, he's trying to lead him to victory. Good up and under by Dean Wade, starting to get more aggressive with two and a half minutes to go. They need to stop Malachi Flynn though. He's got 15 points here in this second half. That move by Wade right there, that's what Coach Weber was talking about. He can do all those things in the post, catch and shoot, facilitate for the team, etc. They get 16 points in the second half for Flynn. And Skaggs stepped on the sideline. A turnover. He mentioned Wade. It's not the matter of does he have the talent to do it. It's, it took him until two and a half minutes to go in the second half to get more aggressive on the offensive end. Coach Weber wants him to do it earlier. Yeah, he has more than enough opportunities, particularly with Sneed being, you know, slow in his flow of the game today. Now Wade has the opportunity to be aggressive down the stretch. Especially with Bernstein having those four fouls, and Bernstein is the one guarding Wade. Wade can't convert on that trip. Under two minutes to play now here in regulation. Well, Wade did a good job right there with Bernstein on him, trying to take it right at his chest and get some contact. Franks for three. No. Stokes. Finds Wade for three. Offensive rebound and a put back by Moeen. One point ball game as Moeen, an offensive board at a crucial time for the Wildcats. 15 points, nine rebounds for Moeen, and it's Washington State up by one. A minute 26 to go here in the second half in Spokane. A great atmosphere here at the Spokane Arena as we welcome you courtside alongside Brock Butler. I'm Eric Rothman. Okay, so we've seen Washington State. We know they can come back. What do they need to do to now hold on to a lead? Well, you can't play safe possessional basketball. You have to still play your style and your pace. And that's what, you know, Coach Ernie Kent is going to have them do. He's drawing it up. He's drawing up an out-of-bounds place right now. And to get those guys going, get a clean look, probably for Skag coming off a, a pin down or something. But most importantly, just don't play safe basketball. Continue to play your style and your brand. How about Kansas State? Is it a matter of just turning to Stokes and Brown, your leaders in the backcourt, and letting them just ride this one out? Absolutely. you got to let them create. Get them in situations in which Wade is in the pick-and-roll situations. McQueen is going to be in the paint, cleaning up the, the – doing the dirty work, putbacks and et cetera. But you have to get your shots and your opportunity. Nothing rush.
Flynn double teamed through it right into the trap. Barry Brown out with it, and Kansas State reclaims the lead under one minute to play. That was just good defense right there. Saw Flynn get in a bad situation, and just put their hands up, got a deflection, and got out to the transition. Timeout taken by Washington State. It's a 6 nothing run for Kansas State. Stokes got his hands in there and led to the Brown transition dunk. And just like we talked about, the upperclassmen, Brown and Stokes, calm in a situation like this and forcing a turnover. I've been so impressed by Brown for so many reasons. You know, when Stokes went out, he had to step up in the major way offensively. When Skaz got going offensively, he had to step up defensively. And now you see him in the huddle, working his way all around the huddle. Come on, Snead, I need you. Giving him a high five right there. Talking to all his teammates, rallying the truth together to say, let's finish this one off on the road. It's the final non-conference game for Kansas State. They head to Iowa State on the 29th, and then they play West Virginia, Texas Tech back to back, and not too far off, Kansas in a couple of weeks. It's an absolute buzzsaw playing in the Big 12 this year. Yeah, let me tell you, this is a high quality win, and these are the type of wins that you need going ahead and into conference play. It's not gonna be an easy task, but if you can pull this off right here on the road, Going, fighting against this adversity, losing the player, getting the player back. So many emotional things happening in this game. This will be a high-quality win. Not quite a win yet, though. 51 seconds to go, but it is a 6-0 Kansas State lead. Washington State hasn't hit a field goal in two and a half minutes. I'm sure Flynn got something to say about that. Sure he does. 16 points in the second half for Flynn. Lynn, step back for three, tough shot. 10 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Now Kansas State with the lead and the basketball. You have time, you don't have to reach on this possession. You just need a solid stop, a defensive possession in the half court. Nothing crazy, no fouls. Solid defense. 10 on the shot clock, 20 seconds in regulation to play. Brown to the rack, blocked by Franks, but a whistle. A foul on Robert Franks will send Barry Brown Jr. to the free throw line. That was just one savvy play by Brown. Showing the ball, moving the ball out the way, getting Franks to bite on it, and drawing the contact. That was a savvy play by Brown right there. Brown is two for two from the line tonight. He is 84% on the season. Even if he makes both of them, Karan, still a one-possession game, 16 and a half seconds to play for Washington State. Exactly. And I don't know if you, Coach Ernie Kenny, if you want to call a timeout here or do you want to just go with the flow, with the length of the floor, without the defense setting up. Got one timeout remaining if he wants to use it. Brown gets them both. Three-point lead for Kansas State. Final 11 seconds of regulation. Here's Flynn. Long three for Flynn. No. Big rebound by Brown, and he's fouled. And Barry Brown Jr. When Bruce Weber and company go and watch game tape of why they were able to come back late in this second half, it's going to be because of Barry Brown Jr. Barry Brown just did all the things that's, that was necessary to impose his will on this ball game. You know, we talked about it. It's those going out and having the problems with Snead having a tough rhythm to get started and getting into the flow of this game with Wade, you know, limited touches. He just found a way to impose his will on this ball game and lead these guys down the stretch. That foul was on Bernstein, so his fifth. Four points, seven rebounds, two assists for Bernstein as he is disqualified. The referees are taking a look at the game clock to make sure it was stopped properly as the whistle was blown. And it ran for a couple extra ticks, so I assume they're going to put about maybe four to four and a half seconds somewhere in there. 
You see the baseline referee John Higgins was the one to blow the whistle. You watch his arm and the intent to call the foul. And we'll move it to 5.1 seconds as Trick Bernstein fouls out. We mentioned Brown, but 17 points here in the second half. 21 overall to lead Kansas State. As the Wildcats led by as many as 17 in the first half, Washington State was able to come back and actually lead here in the second half by eight. But the Cougars have gone cold, no points in the last two minutes and 45 seconds. And Kansas State has gone on an eight nothing run over that time. The big reason why is this man at the free throw line, Barry Brown Jr. Kansas State looking for their 10th win of the season. This would be a nice morale booster and a quality win heading into Big 12 play. You can say that again. We talked a lot about, you know, where the scoring was going to come from, you know, with Sneed, Wade, and Stokes, you know, playing some consistent basketball. I think we found another diamond in the rough in, in, in Brown, just doing all the major things that's necessary to win ball games down the stretch. And he is going to be really relied upon as they get into Big 12 play because there are so many great point guards offensively in that conference. And he's not limited. You know, his biggest, you know, uh, thing is his defense. You know, he's picking up guys, putting them on the best players. And you think usually when guys are like that, with a motor like that, they can't score from the perimeter. But he's a guy that can score from the perimeter. He can handle the ball extremely well. He can get into the paint, draw fouls, and an excellent foul shooter down the stretch. What does Washington State take away from this game? I mean, it's a learning experience. You know, walk away out this situation knowing that you played a high-quality team, a team that's going to, you know, prepare for the marathon of the season, that's going to be there, that's going to be up there with the likeness of all the other top teams out there nationally. And it's a learning experience. You learn from these things, you get better from it, you don't get worse, you compete at a high level, and you learn from these games. Washington State put themselves in a position to win after trailing by as many as 17. But Kansas State riding the ship with about three minutes to play. And getting some clutch baskets and free throws down the stretch by Barry Brown. Flynn with four seconds to play. Over the timeline, a little floater in the lane is good, but that will not be enough for Washington State as they fall here in Spokane to Kansas State, 68-65. The Wildcats move to 10-2. Washington State falls to 7-4. Barry Brown Jr., the big scorer for Kansas State, 23 points on 8 of 17 shooting. As Kansas State picks up the victory for our entire crew, for Ron Butler, I'm Eric Rothman saying so long as we now get you to Jalen and Jacoby.